I moved to the Los Angeles area after about 33 years away from here. I am a woodblock printmaker. I'd like to talk a little bit today about how I make my prints. I had been printing my woodblock prints up in Seattle, Washington. While I was there, I did a series of prints called 36 Views of Mount Rainier. In Seattle, you can see Mount Rainier any time of the day, out of the corner of your eye while you're driving around. Uh, some days it dominates the city, and some days, because of the rain, you don't see it at all. Hokusai was a great Japanese woodblock printmaker who did 36 views of Mount Fuji. And when I became a printmaker, woodblock printmaker, I decided that I would honor printmaking by doing 36 views of Mount Rainier. My name is Professor Gloria Condrup. I'm director of Archetype Press at Art Center College of Design in Pasadena, California. Archetype Press, it's probably one of the largest letterpress facilities still in use by any university in this country. We have close to 3,000 drawers of what's called foundry metal type. Archetype Press, it's a wonderful vehicle for creativity. Vandercook proof presses, which were used by many newspapers, can now be used to create art books, typography posters, and basically experimentation that could then be printed. Everything in this room is calibrated to be a certain height. So when someone makes a wood block, when someone makes a lino cut, it all has to be calibrated to 0.918 of an inch or 66 points. Christina Hagman is one of these fine artists who came to Archetype and said that she needed a facility where she can print her series of wood blocks. And the Vanicook Proof Press is a great vehicle for her in which to print her wood blocks and to have better control of how the printing process is in terms of editioning. Our mission is for the preservation and creation of language and image. This is Margaret Jensen and I am the press operator instructor here at Archetype Press. I've been working with Christina Hagman for about two to three months now and she has one of the nicest printers or artists I've ever met and uh, it's wonderful to work with her and she involves me quite a bit in getting things registered and you know the impression just right and getting everything locked in just right and it's uh, really wonderful to work with her. When I moved to Los Angeles I didn't have somebody to work with and I didn't have a Vandercook to work on. Vandercook, as Gloria may have explained to you, is a proofing press for newspapers. A wonderful press and it makes prints very crisp and clear and I want everything registered just absolutely perfectly. So I have Maggie working with me and she is a fantastic printmaker. Printmaking in an unusual way, not all by hand, using a printing press, reusing something that had once been an industrial process and turning it into an art making process. This is a piece of wood, it's laminated. It's called Sheena, but tape them together to make them type high. Gloria had talked about type, the lead type is exactly this high. Then I take my original painting and I do a photocopy of it. In order to transfer it to the block, the original painting is backwards. To, to print, you have to turn it backwards. In other words, you'll see here, there's this long wall. When it's carved onto the block, it's on the other oh. side. In order to do that, I use transfer paper, and I will tape the image to the block. And then I will follow the, with a pencil, and it'll transfer it, making the image backwards onto the raw block. The first block I carve is called the key block. It has all the information that I'm going to need for the entire composition. I'm just going to show you a few of these lines. They get transferred onto the block. I carve the key block and then I put it in the printing press and I put the key block onto six other blocks of wood and then I carve them away. This was the key block and then every color gets its own block. I begin by carving the key block, and this is how I create an edge to carve two. It's really easy to slip and carve in an area you don't want to do, so it takes, it's taken a lot of practice to figure out how to do this. Larger tools will clean out an area. You carve away anything that's not going to be holding the ink. For more precise areas, you use smaller tools and control it. Using the, the 
palm of your hand helps push and I use my finger to help guide it and keep pressure just in the area I want it to go so that it doesn't slip. So you take all that away. The ink will not stay on this part and will only be in the area I want it to be. For example, this one has had this entire area carved out already and it's just going to print this part of the wall of my image. I think that's enough on carving and transfer. So we're going to go and I'll show you how a print is built up using all the different blocks one on top of the other. So for the purposes of demonstration, I've printed each and every block onto mylar, see-through mylar, so we can build up a print and you can see how each block fits one on top of the other, starting with the palest colors first. So we've got the sky color. Now we're putting the detail, the second block, green, more detail. Now we're building up the yellow block, one right on top of the other deepening the yellows to create a richer color. Block five, and then block six to create the entire composition. You get to see what's called the furniture. And then we lock it into place, and so that way the, the block is not moving around. Maggie has registered this in, there's these things that we call grips, her foot pedal, controls the grips and it will hold on to the paper so that the paper doesn't slide around and always goes in exactly the same place. She guides it with her hand so that the paper doesn't flop around. Carving creates a really sharp line, so sometimes I like to wipe the ink off of parts of the area so it has just a little bit of what we call plate tone. There's a little residue of ink on it, but it's not as strong as it would be when it's full strength on the wood. So she's just inked up this plate and I'm going to wipe a part of it gently off so it has a little bit left on but not as strong. Every now and then you have to stop and add more ink to the press. Then you let it mill around until it's evenly distributed on the roller. This piece of paper has been through the printing press three times already. Uh, one time to create the paler orange, uh, another time to create the darker orange and the blue, and then a third time to create this pale blue. And now we're going to add yet another color that will be in the palm trees and the water. And then you can see that the green is stronger here and paler where I wiped it. This is a subtle difference, but to me it makes all the difference in the world because you want to have uh, things reflecting nature. And you can see, though it has been through the press now four times, it fits pretty terrific within the framework of the paper. To create 25 good prints, I will make 40. Here you have 25 pretty good ones that have been signed. Some of them didn't make the cut. These ones down here become artist proofs because there'll be a flaw in it, the color isn't quite right, the registration will be off a little. Maybe I got a thumb mark on them or a little piece of yellow ink or just a tiny bit of brown will go where the yellow is. and. This one is good enough to be considered an artist proof. There are very few artist proof and they're not sold as part of the edition. But this is all that comes out of carving six blocks, inking them, letting them dry, coming back to the print shop three or four, maybe five times, and they're sold as a limited edition of 25. So you can see they're very similar. One is very similar to the other, but each one is made by hand and only the best ones get to be numbered and signed. Documentation, print documentation says who the printers are, who the artist is. I'm the artist, Christina Hagman. The printer I'm working with is Margaret Jensen at Archetype Press. We're working on a Vandercook Press. It says how many blocks there are, how many colors there are, what kind of inks there are, how big the paper is, and it also states if I have any artist proofs, it documents two artist proofs so that when somebody buys a print, this one 13 over 25, it is considered beautiful.